I am Roxanne Shante, and I'm a battle rapper. My name is Shante, and the mic is my main man. It's not Soul Train or American Bandstand. And I have never lost a battle yet, not even two times with breast cancer. Please believe it, baby. Life for me has never really been easy. I'm so, I would think that when people get a certain view of Roxanne Shante, they have a misconception that you know that it was all about hip hop and dancing and having fun. That's the reason why I'm one of those artists that people don't have a lot of pictures of. You don't see a lot of photos of me in after parties. You don't even see a lot of smiles. Prior to my diagnosis of breast cancer, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't, I didn't even have an idea of it. So when I did feel a lump in my breast, I remember saying to myself, like, okay, I'm getting older, you know, my breast must be falling apart. Like, what is this? I guess they weren't gonna stay intact. They weren't gonna always, you know, sit up. I've had babies, you know, this must be what happens as you get older. And all of a sudden, I actually had came down with a really, really bad cold. And I was like, why can't I shake this cold? And I went to just my regular physician. And while I was there, they, you know, they want to check your heart rate. They want to listen to how your lungs are, whether or not your lungs are clear. And as they were doing that, they were actually, you know, she, she said to me, she said, wait, do you know you have a lump in your breast? And I said, yes. And she said, how long have you had this? And I said, for a long time. Go back to my doctor and my doctor is saying, uh, well, you know, you're going to need to speak to an oncologist. So now I'm going through my whole list of what I know about physicians and doctors. So I'm saying, okay, optometrists, that's your eyes, and gynecologists, that's your, and you know, and podiatrists, that's your, what, what is an oncologist? Like, what would that be for? And then that's when they sat me down and told me, and I was like, wow. Because I don't smoke, you know, I don't drink. I've never used drugs. Like those have always been the things that I stood up on. To me, that was my strongest point. So what is this? Like how many things must I experience before it's okay to just be happy? I tell my sisters everything, but I didn't want to tell them this. So when I started losing hair, I remember my sister, Neek Neek, she was like, what's going on with your hair? And I was like, oh, nothing. She was like, why are you so tired? And I was like, ah, oh, nothing. And she was like, well, I can get you a quick weave. And I was like, okay, yeah, let me go ahead and get this quick weave. And I didn't know that there was something when you go through treatment called hothead. And hothead is actually, when you go through treatments, your temperature, body temperature goes up. So you feel extremely hot. So you really want something cool on your head. So the last thing you want on your head is a quick weave. And I didn't know that until I went in for treatment. I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, you think a weave is hot if you're in a club and in a party. Baby, you need to be wearing one when you're sitting there plugged up <laughs> and getting the treatment. And um, I remember calling her and having to tell her, like, I gotta get this off my head. I need to tell you what's going on. And then I told her and she broke down crying. And I told her, don't do that to me. So doing everything in regular Roxanne Shante fashion, you know, taking everything as a battle and saying like, this is another one I'm gonna win. Don't worry about it, I got this, you know. Has anything else ever took me out? You're talking about, you know, if you get your breast removed, how do you feel about that? And I was like, take them. In my mind, honestly, I was thinking like, okay, good. You can take these, I can get a new set. You know what I'm saying? Now, you can take these croissants, because I'm already rolling them up, tucking them in a bra like the croissants at this point. And I was like, look, you can have these croissants, give me a nice little pair of Cinnabons, I'm gonna be great, you know? And when I looked over, they were crying. And I was like, you know, and these are, you know, this is my medical family now. And they were like, we never had anybody come in here with this type of attitude and feel this way. So we're gonna do everything possible to keep you intact. I have been through so much that there was just no way I was going to accept this. You know, I would go in there and I literally would crack jokes because I wasn't losing weight. Like, am I gonna ever slim down? Like, why, why am I still big? Do I get the, what do the slim part come, doc? So some people made a bucket list. I made a it list. So I just felt like, you know what, it. This is what it's gonna be, this is what it's gonna be. I'm gonna do everything that I wanna do for my family that I didn't get a chance to do. We're doing all these great things, buying them whatever they want, buying myself whatever I want, doing whatever we want. So I go in, 
I'm at the end of my treatment and everything. They tell me, you know, you're going to be fine. You know, your cancer's in remission. So, and I was sitting there like, what? And they were like, yeah, you know, you're going to live. And I was like, with all this debt that I just piled up? Like, you mean I'm, I gotta stay here? Like, what? Like, 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 I should have felt like, oh my God, I'm, I'm here. I'm like, it's like, what? Like, a lot of up. Like, I ain't been paying bills. Like, this is gonna kill me. Like, this is what's gonna kill me now. And they laughed, and you know, I hugged them, and we cried, and we laughed about it. That's when I realized that I'm definitely here for a reason. And so, every month of October, I call it Rocktober, because I know that I've survived another year. And my reason for being here is to make sure people are happy. My radio show is called Have a Nice Day because I feel like you wasted a day if you don't make it a good one. If you let somebody come into your space and make you upset and turn your day upside down, then you've wasted a day, a day that you will not get back, a day that when in the end comes, you will wish you had it. We as black women are always labeled so strong so focused, we can fix anything. We take care of everybody else first. So we can have a lump in our breast. Baby falls, get a lump on their head, we're going straight to take care of the baby. Then we go back, think about the lump on our breast. If it doesn't hurt us, we want to keep going. And that is the reason why I feel that so many African American women die from breast cancer uh, more than any other women. The reason why I post up my scars every year is because there's some woman somewhere who's feeling like she may have made the wrong decision, but you didn't because you're here and you're alive. So even with these scars, you can still, you're still here. You know, that's the, and I don't call them scars, I call them beauty marks because it's the beauty of surviving. So you need to look at it that way. So what I do is called the survivor strut. And that's the way I start my walks off. I have all the survivors come to the front and we actually started off with a strut, which is almost like a turn to the side type walk where you just cross your feet over, cross your feet over. And it's one of those things where you're able to say like, look, I'm really here. Like you have to, it has to show, it has to be that confidence. Like I've made it a year and I'm gonna make it again. And I'm gonna keep doing it because you just don't want anyone to feel bad. And so for the whole month of October, I make it my business to do that. And I make it my business to wear something pink every day to, to just show that even if someone sees me in the street, they know that I am representing life and not death.